Hey YouTube! Today I want to talk to you about uh, a few things you might want to know before you buy an RV. I spent quite a bit of time doing some research, I think probably about six to eight months before I actually bought my second RV. And that was because after I bought my first RV, I had a few things that I did not feel that great about. So hopefully today I can share some things with you that, um, that I learned doing my research and that I've learned after owning a couple of them. Uh, before we get started, you may want to consider pausing the video and getting a, a pen and paper because there is quite a bit of things that I'm going to go over that uh, may be a little, little bit to digest, but uh, it, it's going to be a lot that will help you in the long run. So uh, the first thing I would tell you is I would join every web forum out there that I could. Uh, there's, there's so many of them. Many of them are actually put out there by the owners of, uh, like Forest River is one that I'm a member of. They make RVs and they actually have a forum. People go on there and complain about problems they've had with their actual Forest River. So it's a good way to, to hear from other RV owners as to what they've had problems with and I like knowing what the problems are before I buy it so I can kind of get it uh, maybe fixed at the dealership before I take it home. So web forums is probably the best advice I'm going to give you today. But uh, one thing that I kept noticing when I was on the web forum is not many people were happy with Coleman campers and nobody seemed happy with um, Camping World. Camping World, the customer service and the service department seemed to be the biggest problem that I found in there is that people were having to wait two and three months to get their RVs looked at. And of course, if that's in the middle of the summertime, you've missed a lot of your camping season just due to getting something repaired that shouldn't have been broke to start with. So. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest out of that is going to a local dealership to buy your RV. Uh, with a local dealership you're going to get a lot better service and many times you get a free warranty whereas you may have to buy the warranty if you go to Camping World. Um, the other thing I would say is check the weight of the RV. If you go to the RV on the driver's side there's going to be a yellow sticker and it's about this big and that sticker will have all of the different weights on there. It will talk about dry weight which means nothing on the camper as far as no propane, no battery, um, no water. So that is completely empty. That would be your dry weight. Your gross weight is what your RV is going to weigh when you have all those materials in there, but also your camping gear and uh, say your uh, generator and all of your all of your all of your camping supplies in there is what your gross weight will be. But also, what you want to do is look at the towing capacity of your vehicle and see how much your vehicle can tow. You want to check when let's say your vehicle says it can tow 10,000 pounds, you want to take whatever that towing capacity is and multiply that times 0.75. That's going to give you 75% of, of what your vehicle can tow. The reason I say that is let's imagine that your vehicle says on the speedometer that it can do 100 miles per hour. You don't want to drive at 100 miles per hour. You know that. It's not good for your vehicle. Well, you don't want to tow it at 100% capacity either. So with that being said, if you're going to go on a long trip, you want to make sure that your vehicle is comfortable doing it, uh, not pulling it at full speed at all times. Uh, it'll be a lot safer as well to have... Uh, to have that ratio just right is going to give you a safer travel as well. So the other thing is on that same yellow sticker that I spoke about, it's going to tell you your water capacity and that is very important because if, if your RV only holds 15, 20 gallons, well you can imagine how long that water is going to last you. Um, if the RV says 50 gallons, that's of course going to be a lot better and it will also tell you 
uh, how much water capacity it will hold for uh, the gray water and the black water, which is your shower water and your toilet water. So that's good to know, especially it, a lot of this depends too on do you plan on going to campgrounds or do you plan on just being out by yourself in a secluded wooded area you're gonna have to depend on the water you have in your tank whereas if you're at a campground you're gonna be plugging into electricity and you're gonna be using the water that they have so those capacities will not matter as much if you're staying at a campground versus if you plan on going out into the into the wilderness we'll say um, another thing I would like to point out is that if you're not mechanically inclined I do not suggest buying an RV period if you're not mechanically inclined I would suggest getting a tent um, RVs can be very problematic and I'm not just talking about one particular model or company they're all they're all pr pretty problematic themselves. You're going to find that out when you get into the web forum and, and read up about them. But um, that, that's that's some of the best advice I can give you is that if you're not mechanically inclined, it's best to back out now. Um, also, if you're going to look for a used RV, I suggest bringing a ladder with you. Uh, one of the biggest problems all RV manufacturers have is they put such thin rubber roofing material. It's not much thicker than a balloon, the rubber of a balloon. That rubber material is only good for about three to five years before it starts going out. So bring a ladder so that you can get to where you can see the roof of the RV and make sure that it's been kept up. Um, also, if you're looking for used RVs, if you have a good nose, if you can smell good, that is a benefit. If you cannot, I would bring somebody with me that you know they've got a good sniffer on them because if you go into an RV and it smells like mold or mildew, more than likely it's had a roof problem or a plumbing issue. And with that being said, you could run into a lot of money down the road trying to repair these issues and many times almost every time you can spend more money trying to do that repair than the RV is actually worth so uh, it, it's not good for safe health safety to be breathing the mold and mildew but it's also not good on your pocketbook trying to repair it um, with that being said that was one of the things that I found out from my experience I bought my first RV was a 24 footer and it had uh, problems with the roof and I thought I can do roofing no big deal and I did re-roof it but I never was able to get rid of all of the issues within the walls within the floors you could not get rid of that smell and of course uh, it, it would bother my throat a little bit my sinuses so uh, that was an issue that I ran into myself. As far as uh, other things that I've ran into myself personally, I, I've tried pulling my RVs with three different vehicles. And I'm going to tell you kind of my experiences with all of them. Uh, the first one was a Ford Explorer. It was a two-door model with a very short wheelbase, meaning the distance between the front wheel and the distance be between the back wheel, that's your wheelbase. And it's very short on a two-wheel, two-door uh, Explorer. Not much different than a Jeep, if you're familiar with a Jeep. But you do not want to pull an RV with a short wheelbase vehicle, I'm going to tell you. It will give you... It will give you kind of a, a more dangerous drive. As vehicles pass by you, you can feel not only the wind of the RV move, but it also will move the driver vehicle. So that can be uh, very hazardous. Uh, you also need to check into getting a weight distribution system. That's something else that will actually help stabilize that pull 
whereas the, I did not know about it and did not have it when I first started pulling. Later on, I got an F-250 pickup truck, and um, the thing that I did not like about the F-250 was as the wind goes over the vehicle, it, it, it's like it's, the wind smacks into the front of the RV. It's almost like you can imagine a drag race car, how it has the parachute that comes out the back. That's what it felt like, and I could not ever get that truck to pull that 24-foot uh, trailer that I had. Even though the truck was rated to pull it, it was, it was like it was just too much because of the wind factor. I now pull with a van, and I'm going to tell you that is by far the best thing to pull with is a van. The wind will go over the van and then it goes over the RV and you get no wind resistance. As I have vehicles pass by me, I don't feel any, uh, I don't feel any movement. It's, to me, it's perfect. I now am pulling with a, um, a, a long wall base, uh, that E350 van, and I have a 14 foot trailer. My van is actually a little longer than the trailer, but to me that is a perfect setup for my situation because I can pull into like a Walmart, I can pull into two parking spaces and I've still got room and I love being able just to pull off the interstate and go into two parking spaces and 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 feel like I'm I can not be in somebody's way. Whereas if I was pulling a, a 24 footer like I used to I didn't have that luxury so at any rate I, I just wanted to kind of give you some of the pros and cons of what I've run into over the past few years but um, again the biggest thing I can tell you is join the web forums you're going to learn so much from there and there's plenty of videos here on YouTube and I've got a few other videos as well that may help you on here and I'm going to be putting more videos out uh, as time goes on, so go down and hit the, uh, there's a little red area that says subscribe. Hit that and uh, that way you'll be informed when I come up with some other videos that might help you in this situation. Hit the like or dislike and uh, go down into the comments area and tell me what, uh, tell me some things that you learned while you were researching. I'm sure there's other people here that uh, that have learned things as well that they can share with you. You can share with them. So uh, thanks, thanks for uh, watching today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.